We're back. Another episode of the DC Defender Show. Episode two. It's Revenge Tour. Revenge Week. It's it's Get Them Back game. You ready, Alex? Let's hit the music. Huge game, huge game, huge game, huge game, huge game. I can't say it enough. Week three, Renegades. It's a rematch of the title game. The debacle that happened in the Alamo Dome. Seems like it always happens in the Alamo. Forget the Alamo. Uh, Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, We'll talk about it. I think it's going to be a challenge. I think it's going to be another challenge for us, and I think that this is a huge game when you look at what's coming up. Yeah, it, it definitely is um, to set the tone. It, it's a must win because it, with the standings, the way the standings are right now, and the fact that you don't like you don't have to finish in second to make the playoffs. Like if you finish in second, you're not guaranteed. So you need a win because it, this is your inner division, right? Two teams in the USFL are going to win this week. Yeah, so you got to. Someone's going to be two and one. You want to make this team own three. You want to kill yeah. them off. Yeah. And that that's the biggest thing. You got a two game lead with seven games to go and you play them again. Like you really could steal their season with an own three start. Yeah. And you know, they don't want to go in three. So we're going to get the best shot. You absolutely know we will get their best shot. Oh, a hundred percent. Especially with Stoops and his staff. Uh, real quick before we get into this. Where did you have the Renegades ranked? Do you remember? This week? Yeah. Seventh. Seventh. I had them eighth. I thought they were the no-brainer eighth team. I, I just don't like anything about this team, honestly. And it's not anything personal. I just I just feel like this is the weakest team out of it. And I know we just saw Houston, and that's probably who you had eighth, right? I had eight, yep. And yep. I, I had Houston seventh because I think Houston's defense can carry them a little bit more. Where I I don't know. I, I, I know you're an offensive guy. I guess Arlington has a better offense than Houston, but I still don't think they're good enough, but we'll get into it. Yep. All right. Uh, two keys. Up-tempo offense. You saw it firsthand when you were there in D.C. when we got the offense moving faster and faster, and they mentioned it on TV. And by the way, I love when Joe Klatt does our games. I just I like it, you miss you miss the wrong game, right? Like, well, it's nice being there, but if you're gonna watch on TV, to watch yeah. to listen to Menefi and Clat go for two yeah. and a half hours, whatever it is, it like it there's a different feel to it. It felt like a big game. Every big play felt like a big play. Um mm-hmm. and so you, you miss that. Hopefully Clat's doing the the game this week. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. Is it on ESPN? I know it's the first game of the week, it's a Saturday game. I don't know. So. I'm not sure if yeah. it's on ESPN. Yeah. But so you were there, up temp, up tempo offense. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Explain I mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, last week, I mean, <laughs> up tempo to me does a couple of things. Number one, you start to get into a groove a little bit, it changes the flow of the game. And it seemed like, you know, Jordan really struggled with accuracy there for a bit. I mean, he was 16 to 32 for the game. So he's 50%. That's not great. But, you know, he was missing a lot of throws. And sometimes, you know, and defensively, they start to get in a groove. And when you go up tempo, you know, and you, you hit a play and then you line up and you're hitting another play, it makes the defense uncomfortable. You know, defense is like the huddle. They like to take a break between plays, make sure the right guys are on the field. You know, and we went up tempo and we started moving the ball. And, you know, there are different levels of tempo. I like it when this team goes very fast. You know, sometimes they'll run a play and they'll get up on the ball and, you know, it'll be a check with me thing and it's – while it's tempo, it's still slow. But that first drive that we had, we moved down the field. We went up tempo, and, and Tayamu looked much more comfortable, and we moved the ball. So I'd like to see us mix that in. And like I called for two tight ends, Coach Kais, if you are watching and listening, um, you know, <laughs> uh, and you did take me up on that two tight end for a large part of the game, here's my other tip for you. Let's run a little bit more up tempo, and let's see some NASCAR up tempo where we're really going. Especially against this defense, I think this defense they they got lit up by McCarron for the most part. Uh, Macarell Macarell looked very average this past week, and so did Adrian uh, Martinez for the Stallions. If you follow Stallions Twitter, the world's on fire because their offense didn't look great. You know, like everyone's like, "What's going on?" But against this defense in Week One, Arlington, 
they thought they found their Magoo. Matt Corral mm-hmm. looked like Magoo, and and, sir, and it, they're going to grow and all this kind of stuff. I think this defense is very vulnerable, and if if you get kind of Camo in that groove, I, I think you can put it on them, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we thought that last year going to the championship game, too, didn't we? Oh, yeah, but, but it goes to point number two right here. Right here. The defense has to carry their weight. Yeah. So I, I feel like I, on the offensive side of the ball, it, it was a good enough performance to win last year. The defense could not get off the field. They yeah. dog walked them, as the young kids say. They dog walked them down the field. And it starts with the Sal Canella. I know he only had four catches of 71 yards, but that is, and I talked about it in the previous episode, that's the part of the defense that I'm most scared about. The the yeah. five five yards right over the de- offensive line or underneath stuff. We saw it against San Antonio where they, they, they throw the ball for three yards and they take it for 15. Yeah. That's stuff that, I, that I'm a little scared about with this defense. Yeah. Yeah. And I was being kind of a wise guy about last year, but cause it was last year and this year is this year, but um, that was uh very profound, wasn't it? But um, you know, they threw for 280 yards in that championship game. And they ran for what 111 or so. They had almost 400 yards of offense on us. And in this league, that's like 600 because of that running clock deal, yeah. um, and fewer offensive plays. So uh, Chuck Long will be a challenge, and it'll be a challenge for Coach Williams. And I'm sure Coach Williams and these guys have been looking since last year what they did to exploit our defense in the championship game, and to uh, have something special for the Renegades. Good coaches usually don't get licked like that twice. So I'll be curious to see the adjustments and see what we do to slow that offense down next week or this week. Who to watch hey. for? I, I, I put uh, Sal Canilla, Juwan Meningo, Jalen Redman, and Chuck Long. You mm-hmm. pick one, and then I'll go, and then you pick one, and it's kind of a process of elimination. You go first. Yeah, I mean, I'll take Coach Long. Um, you know, the guy has – he was a coach, uh, coach for Josh Heupel at, at Oklahoma and was at Kansas and certainly has a pedigree. I think you had pointed out that he was the Battle Hawks offense coordinator for um, Te'amu in, in uh, 2020. Um, the guy knows football. He's a heck of a football coach. Um, you know, they, they uh, offensively haven't been that bad this year. He's got a veteran quarterback in Luis Perez. Um and I think he's going to, you know, I think he proved his medal last year. They got hot at the right time. And, you know, Greg Williams puts on, puts together good defenses and he tags 400 points on us or uh, 400 yards on us almost. Thank God it wasn't 400 points. It felt like it though, but um, he's tough. He's good at what he does. And uh, I'm looking forward to that matchup. Williams versus Long. Hold on one second. Incoming. Okay, I'm going to hand out. Alex doesn't even know about this. But I will send a $25 gift card on Alex's Twitter. We are going to put out a poll, or we're going to put out a question of the week. One of those that correct it puts the correct answer, or if you comment on our YouTube video, we will put you in a randomizer, and I will send out the gift card. It's Who... Did Chuck Long play for in college? I know you could Google this. And who did he end up runner up in the Heisman race in 1986? So if you leave that as a comment underneath this show or on Alex's Twitter, because Alex will feature this as the uh, question of the week, we'll put you all in a randomizer. Whoever gets the question right, and we will have a winner, and I'll mail it out a gift card. Alex wow. didn't even know that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll split it with you then so you don't incur all the cost. But I will tell you this. <laughs> is is the randomizer we get to pick who we like best or who always leaves the nicest comments? Is that randomizer? Are we going to put it in a... No, we're, we're going to put all the answers on here and we'll hit the go button and it'll it'll be like a wheel of fortune wheel and it'll pick out oh. the winner. So, Love it. Yeah, I, it will be very much randomizer. So that is the question of the week. If you're watching episode two... You got the question of the week. Leave a comment here if you have the answer of who uh, Chuck Long, where he went to school, and who he finished second in the Heisman race to. Love it. But my turn. I'm going to pick Jalen Redman, uh, defensive tackle. He kind of replaced uh, TJ Barnes, who is now on the defenders, and he is putting up some uh, decent numbers. Uh, the best time that they are getting pressure on the quarterback, it's not from the edge guys. I know Beasley's got two sacks, but it's when guys like Redman are getting up in the middle. 
Um, luckily for us, I believe our offensive line strength is in the middle. I think mm-hmm. that center and the two guards are are strong. And if they can protect Redmond, I think Hayes and I think our uh, whoever plays tackle can control Vic Beasley, who has two mm-hmm. sacks on the year. But most of the time, it's because Redmond's right there. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I know they don't give you a half a sack unless you hit the quarterback, but Redmond's doing half the work by taking two guys and destroying the middle of that, and Beasley's kind of following up for a sack. So um, Jalen Redmond is a name to watch out for, and right now I would say he is the defensive tackle, like the all-UFL defensive tackle, in my opinion. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Um, I'd probably take Sal Canella to talk about. And um, that sounds like something when you eat raw chicken, right? Is that what you get? Like if you eat raw chicken? <laughs> Man, don't, don't, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I love Sal Canella. I love him. Like following him in 2022 at, at the, the Breakers, like I just love him. Fun fact he is, he is a fashion designer. He is, a, yeah. he is like a real fashion designer. So I know. Listen, nothing against him. I just said it sounds like it sounds like some kind of disease you get when you eat bad meat. I call it Sal Canella. Anyway, um, <laughs> with that, um, six catches, 59 yards. He's a weapon. He's tough. And I think they're going to try to get the ball to him. To your point, you know, even even last week, now we had, you know, that long run Merritt had, um, they got him matched up on a linebacker, got him matched up on Hines, and he caught it and then, you know, had that long run before he was stripped by Baker. But, um, you know, I think he's going to be a tough matchup, especially for our linebackers inside when they're matched up on him in coverage. Um, phenomenal athlete, good hands, um, probably an NFL caliber player, tight end. So Sal Canella, one to watch. W T W two W four. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And the fourth man is the returner. This guy is electric. Every time you watch Arlington, you see this guy take off the ball, take off with the ball. Uh, he's third in the league in all-purpose yards. He's only behind Marcus Sims, who had a 75-yard catch on one play and returns a few kicks. And he's behind Darius Shepard, who's the returning special teams player of the year for the Battle Hawks, who, by the way, the Battle Hawks have also given up a lot of points. So, of course, you're going to get a, little, a lot of all-purpose yards. But he's third in the league. He's a little guy. He's like 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he's fun to watch. He's electric. If we get into the shootout kind of thing, Mm-hmm. which like the championship was kind of the return game, especially in this league is going to be super important, especially if the game's close in the fourth quarter, you you saw it last week against Houston, um, Justin Hall bringing out a few. I just think the return game is very important. And I think if this game follows what the championship game was like, because you do have the coach staff to the same exact and you have the return quarterbacks and you have a lot of returning players mm-hmm. for this. Um, if we follow that script, that return game is going to be more important now with the UFL rules than in the XFL championships. So this is a name to watch. Yeah, no question. So out of those four, I know you want Chuck Long first because you know you old guys stick together. But which which one do you think is going to have the most dramatic effect on the uh, game? Probably Canella. Cause he'll have a lot of offensive snaps. I think they'll probably be able to move the ball on a sum. I think we're going to have some discomfort this week trying to stop them. You know, they have a veteran quarterback, um, but I'd say Canel is probably going to figure uh, to be a difference maker in the game. Just hopefully yeah, not too much. Yeah. Well, they have a deep wide receiver room too. I will give that to them with Peyton and Vaughn and Winstead and Canella and Burnett. Like they, mm-hmm. they have a very deep, I, I'm not so sure on the running backs. Levi mm-hmm. Brown's got 20, uh, 49 rushing yards in two games. Uh, <laughs> Devon <laughs> Smith, you know, we're Mauler's guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we're Mauler's guy. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go down that path with Devon Smith and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's in the past, right? Right. But um, I think another guy to watch out for for this team on offense, and it's funny, we're, we talk about one defensive guy and we're talking all offense with this team. So that kind of tells you what kind of team they are. But Lindsey mm-hmm. Scott Jr., he comes in for yeah. two points. He's he is the former first pick of the Maulers, the first pick yeah. of the Roughnecks, ends up in the Renegades, and they kind of deploy him in two points and one point conversions. And he's kind of a weapon because he's a lot more shifty than Luis Perez. And all I could, when, he's not as fast as DeAndre Johnson. If you watch uh, Pere, uh, Perez with the Generals, mm-hmm. it was kind of like yin and yang. Like one was a thrower, one was the athlete. 
but yeah. he is more athletic than Perez, and it kind of gives them a different look. So do you do you think they're going to throw out a little bit more, especially with an aggressive defense? Yeah. You, you get to see Lindsey Scott actually play not on a two-point conversion, but, you know, they they run a little RPO with him. Yeah, yeah, and I think they're going to put him in too because um, outside of just the conversions, because I saw that, I think, in the game against um, St. Louis. You know, they brought him in. They got down around the 12-yard line. They were getting close in the red zone, and a couple of those plays they were shoveling out with uh, Perez. But, you know, Perez brings a different dimension. He's uh, got a 70% completion rate right now, so he's very, very accurate. And, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, about 230, 225, 230 a game for an average. But Scott can change the speed and the tempo and the pace of the game, and he gives us something else we have to prepare for, right? So I think we'll see a lot of uh, Lindsey Scott, and he's a great athlete. He really is. Game picks, explain yourself. You have a one-point game. Explain yourself. <clears throat> I don't think Arlington is bad, as bad as everybody else thinks. I think that, you know, against Birmingham, you know, Birmingham is probably the cream of the crop, and, uh, you know, Arlington – hung in there for a bit against them before fading. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm not, I think Arlington could have won that ball game Saturday night. And, you know, I've said this about St. Louis before I'll say it again, you know, just cause they play in a big dome stadium and people cheer real loud doesn't mean it's good football. And I don't think they are as good as we are. I don't think St. Louis is a very good football team. I think that uh, Arlington had their butts beat could have won that game very easily. And the miss a field goal. Um, God, they need a kicker. Missed a field goal. And then, of course, you know, um, the Battle Hawks moved the ball and they did what they had to do to win the game. That said, I think they're going to give us fits. I think Perez is tough. Um, you know, he's a veteran. We didn't show that we could stop him. If you recall, the last game of the year, last year at home, uh, at the Rowdy Audi, Arlington took, took us to overtime, almost beat us, got hot with Perez, and, you know, it was a hell of a game to end the season. We beat them. And then we saw him in the championship game and up and down the field. We just couldn't get off the field. So I don't know if it's a matchup thing or what it is, but we played them twice in the last two battles. They've had no problem moving the ball on us. I look for us to win. I think we're going to find a way to gut this one out and win, but I think it's going to be a battle. 24-23, good guys. I I agree with you. I'm, I'm a little scared with this game. I don't. I think they're the worst team in the league. I like honestly. I but I think they have the personnel that matches up well, and they have mm -hmm. the, the scheme that matches up well with the the defenders. My the the reasoning behind me, uh, my score prediction is that I believe, and you told me because you were there, that the defensive backs have taken a step forward from week one to week two, and guys mm -hmm. like Conley are healthy. Right, mm -hmm. and you have Baker, and now you're putting Mike Joe as your who was your number one corner last year. Now is your nickel corner, yeah, an all XFL guy. And then you have the safety Deontay Anderson, who was all XFL last year, is now like kind of your third. If Monte Nicholson's or an Isaiah Johnson aren't hurt, uh, mm -hmm. Deontay Anderson, I I don't was he active week one? I don't even remember, but I I just think that secondary has gotten better and. I haven't seen anything crazy by their offense. Mm -hmm. I, I worry about I worry about the Sal Canillo zone, but mm -hmm. like you their leading receiver has eight catches for 73 yards all year. Like in two games. In yeah. two games. Yeah. Um and, and the game that I really pay attention to, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch a ton of the Battle Hawks Renegades. You you watched more, but against the Stallions, it just seemed like after it was I think it was 11 11 mm -hmm. like Arlington couldn't do anything like they, yeah. they, they and their defense can't stop anything. So mm -hmm. I, I think if we use tempo and we put them out of their misery early, I, I, I think they might get a touchdown late that makes it this close for me. Mm -hmm. I have 11 points. I just think I, I believe in those corners and I think you're going to see a game where it's going to be Conley and Baker. And you're like, Oh, these guys are like the whole league's on notice, not just Alex and Webb. Right. I hope you're right because I like your version of it better, especially if I can kind of kick back and relax and not have to go through, you know, the nail biting to the very end. Um, we'll see. I mean, I do think that certain teams always seem to give you fits, and the last two times against these guys, it's been a, it's been a challenge. Um, do I think we have more talent? Yes. Um, do I think we could blow them out of the building? Yes. 
Do I think they could beat us? Absolutely. But this is huge. This is huge because of what's coming up. I'm not even going to think about what's coming up the next four weeks, but we need this win this week. This is so important to get this win. We get the this, this win, you're right back in the driver's seat. You know you're going to get their best shot, too. They don't want to go 0-3. They go 0-3. That's a long uphill battle, buddy, from 0-3. So we're going to get their best shot. Real quick, uh, XFL is the whole divisions taking on each other. Mm-hmm. You got St. Louis, you got San Antonio. I'm, I'm guessing you chose the Brahmas. No they're, spread. They're in, straight. They're playing in San Antonio? I believe so, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll take the Brahmas. I think I don't think I think St. Louis can be had. I really do. I don't think they're very good defensively. They got AJ McCarron. Okay, good. They have Butler. Great. They have no running game and no defense. And the fans wow. cheer real loud. Yeah, caca. We stink. I I think after this week you have a three team race for two and one. I really do. I, I'm going to take St. Louis. So okay. we'll see. You know what? Fine if they do because we need somebody to beat the Brahmas. We can't, you know, let <laughs> rely let on the Memphis Showbites. We can't rely on the showboats. <laughs> well, at least the showboats are consistent. <laughs> yeah, and showboats will showboat. Um, or the breakers, rather. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the breaker breakers. boats. Yeah, They broke. All right, Alex, we made it through another week. Uh, this will be audio, Spotify, on Friday morning. Uh, yeah. But our show will be Tuesday, 9 a.m. on YouTube, mm-hmm. on the United Football Media. And Wednesday, two PM. Mm-hmm. I I feel like this was a good one. You yeah, you feel like great. this was a good show? Yeah. Felt like it was a great show. Leave some comments down there. We do have some people that are commenting each week, and it's good that we're starting to see those. But uh, you DC fans, leave some comments. Walked out, was leaving the stadium the other night with a really nice guy who's a Georgia graduate, and uh, he was talking. He had come in from Virginia for the game, all the way from Winchester. These people are coming from all over, and I had a really nice chat with him about Georgia football and the UFL and the defenders. Leave your comments down there. Stay in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, if you answer the DC Defender Show question of the week, you can win a gift card. Yep, that's right. And if you go to any home game, you might see this guy talking about lemon guy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Alex. Any 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 last words? Yeah, man. Let's go one and know this week. And until next time, so long, everybody. Shields up, Webman Alex out. <laughs>